podcast for your career and your life, no matter what business you're in. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Northern Power Women podcast sponsored by Be Heard. I'm Simone Roche and she is not Sam Walker. She is in fact the fabulous Edvita Patel. It's Sam's birthday on the day of recording. Happy birthday, Sam. So we thought we'd let her put her feet up, put her toes in the pool for a change and invite Edvita, who is the director of Comms Rebel and the co-founder of Leader Like Me to join me in chatting all things life, career, Northern Power Women. And let's be honest, probably the weather. Uh, Edvita, how are you? Hello, Simone. I'm great, thank you. And happy birthday, Sam. Hope you're enjoying your day and dipping your toes in that pool. You know, it's an absolute privilege to be on this podcast today. The Northern Power podcast was a very, very first podcast I spoke of when I kicked off my public speaking journey, as we call it. So I'm so excited to be here today. Oh, I do. I remember that. I remember that. It was a, I think it was a May time. It was, we always uh, do a gathering of our future list, power list and winners after the awards. And it was, was it two years ago? Or was it three years ago? 2018, 2018. <gasps> it was June. It was June, 2018. Wow. So that was the year you were uh, invited on to the, or nominated um, on yeah. to the future list. And so yeah. what we do is we, we always do a, a live podcast, a little discussion and um, so, I ended up calling Advita at, I think it was two in the afternoon and the event started at like five or six or something like that. And uh, someone had had to drop out, someone had had to cover a media story or, or do a day job or whatever it was. And I just happened to call about who could mix, who could add great context and great discussion into what we were talking about. And I called Advita, unbeknown to me, you had never spoken at anything no. before. Had no, no. No, not publicly. I mean, I've been obviously stood in front of colleagues and with my job, which I'm an internal communications professional. So my job often involves standing in front of colleagues and telling them stories and messages and, you know, communicating different things. But I'd never, ever spoken on a public stage in front of people I didn't know. And it was just so funny when you rang me that day. It was actually, Simone, you rang me at midday. It's, it's, it's ingrained in my brain because <laughs> I just finished reading Shonda Rhimes's book, The Year of Yes. So Shonda Rhimes is the woman who's written Grey's Anatomy, Scandal. Um, I think she writes Station 19, you know, those kind of programs. And she wrote this book about stepping outside of your comfort zone, right? It doesn't matter how successful you might be, but this, she, she spoke about her struggles, about not putting herself out there and not stepping out and imposter syndrome and inner critic. So I literally, because I took the day off because it was going to the event that, that afternoon, that morning I just finished listening to her last chapter and I said to myself, right, Edwita, the next time somebody gives you an opportunity, you're going to have to say yes. Unbeknownst to me, <laughs> midday, you like a phone rings and it's around going, would you mind stepping in? Because somebody is, I couldn't do it now. And I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah, of course I will. <laughs> and then freaked out, obviously, afterwards. Oh, do you know, that's really funny because I love Shonda Rhimes and that was the first ever audible book that I listened to because obviously she did a TED talk. It's a very much, isn't it, about say say yes, isn't it? Or, you know, because she had spent her whole life being invited th to things and saying no. And so yeah. she talks about whether or not it's her her toddler saying, mummy, come and play with me or being invited to sit next to Barack Obama, I think was one of the, one of the things. Yeah. And it was always like, too busy, got too much on, whatever. And I think it was a sister calling her out one time wasn't it and saying yeah. you never say yes to anything well do you know what I'm so glad that you said yes that day and I always remember as well that you pitched up in a fabulous I think purple jacket that yeah. totally blended and coordinated with the seating that we had at the <laughs> event that day so Advita it was meant to be and I'm so glad that you joined us that day so tell us tell us what you've been up to since then tell us about a leader like me so it was that day, actually, Simone, that I decided that I was going to set my own business up. I'd gone through a period of, it wasn't, you know, like a bit of a crisis, like a career crisis, right? I didn't really know what I wanted to do in my life. I'd, I'd gone through an incident in, in my current organization and I just was like, oh, what do I, is comms my world? Should I really be doing it? That day in, in that office, I don't think it was uh, the office overlooking uh, the library. So I think it was, was it Ernst and Young office that they've that got the beautiful, oh, was it, P yeah, they've got the beautiful balcony. Yeah, the KPMG. KPMG, sorry, yeah, KPMG, that beautiful balcony, the sun was glorious that day, which is a rare 
you know, occurrence in Manchester. <laughs> I knew we'd talk about the weather, I'd beat her. I knew it. <laughs> I knew, I knew, I knew it'd come in. It's just a norm. Anyway, that day I was like, do you know what? All these amazing, inspirational women, like looking, when I was speaking on stage and them looking up and nodding along to some of the stuff I was sharing, I was like, this is it, Advita. Like, I felt the euphoria I felt when I came off that stage. And I stood on that balcony with a glass of Prosecco overlooking overlooking the library. And I just thought to myself, you've got to do it. You've got to do it. There's, you've got no option. You've got to do it. And that was the day I made the decision to um, set my own business up. And it was the best decision I had. And that's when I set up Comms Rebel. So Comms Rebel was set up in January 2020, the year of the pandemic, which was <laughs> obviously the best decision I've ever made. And then um, because of the pandemic, I had a bit of a lull in getting work. Um, so I, after procrastinating, panicking, I decided, you know what, Beta, you need to use this time for being productive. And that's when a leader like me started. And a leader like me is a program aimed at underrepresented women of color who want to progress and thrive in their career. And it was because of my, I asked um, my mentor, Priya Bates, who's based in Canada, to um, support me along my um career like my comms rebel career because I wanted somebody who I can identify with who was a South Asian woman uh, she was slightly older than me she'd been in her own business for eight years and I loved everything she wrote and said so I thought you know what I'm going to reach out so I was being brave and I, I reached out to her and I said would you mind being my mentor and she said yes and in our first conversation we had she asked me why I left corporate life and um, I, one of the reasons for leaving corporate life is because I just you know I struggled really in terms of uh, belonging it was a really you know I never saw women uh, well I never saw women in senior positions very rarely I saw women in re- leadership positions in the organizations that I worked in but never saw women of color I never saw women of color in those positions so I spoke about that and the prayer and I were like you know imagine if we had like this amazing network empowered community of women who can identify with each other speak to each other be empowered by each other and we can teach you know teach them and educate them and help them um thrive and be confident because what we discovered in our conversation was confidence was the underlying theme like with you like that day when I said yes to you if I hadn't really pushed myself and said to myself and given me given myself that kind of talking to and, and had my own community around me who reassured me after I got off the phone to you and had a meltdown about what am I doing <laughs> I wouldn't be where I am and then Priya said that that's the issue with you know we don't see leaders who look like us so we don't then we often think we don't belong. So when we don't think we belong, we don't feel like we can thrive. So then you make that decision whether you either keep your head down and don't rock the boat or you leave and you set your own business up like Priya and I did or you just end up not really fulfilling your work. So we set up a leader like me in that six week, we had both of us had a six week lull in our our careers. Um, So we spent six weeks developing a 12 week program. Every week we meet with these incredible women and we uh, and, and non-binary people and we speak about um things that we would have loved to have had in our lives right so confidence imposter syndrome you know selling yourself like what's your worth personal branding all those amazing things that you don't really get told when you're growing and thriving in your career and that's how it started and then we kicked off global initiative because praise based in canada 30 women initially started on our program from all over the globe and, and it's and it's grown from strength to strength. It's amazing. And you talk about the power of mentors there with Priya. And you talk about, you know, this, it's funny, you talk about having this six week lull, you know, and many people have had a, an eight, you know, a, a 14, 15 month lull, you know, but you talk yeah. about six weeks and you talk, you take, took that lull to kind of springboard you into that. But it's great. And I've, I've not met Priya, obviously, but we've we've I think I've been uh, in one of your clubhouse rooms. Yeah. I think. But tell us, tell us how people can get involved or find out more about a uh, leader like me, Evita. So you can get involved. We we're on our socials, so we're on Twitter and on Instagram. We're also you can follow us on. You can look at what we're about on our website, which is aleaderlikeme.com. And we're actually starting our third cohort in June because we only open because Priya and I've got like our day. I call it day jobs, but now it's like leader like me is our day job now as well. <laughs> but because Priya and I have got comms rebel and she's got inner strength which is a communications consultancy over there, we only open the doors to a leader like me uh, three to four times a year. So the next cohort starts in June. So if anyone is interested or they want to know how they can get involved, we're also looking at 
supporting allies, so people who want to be allies and understand how they can support this, this initiative, uh, a leader like me.com. That's where you can find all our information. Brilliant. And we'll put all of that information into our show notes as well, Advita. So please find out more about that. And actually, that's going to lead us on nicely to our life lessons this week. Our life lessons this week of one of your cohort, one of your alumni of um, yeah. a leader like me. Tell us about our life lessons. The amazing Nafisa Shafiq, who is a higher education communications manager. And Nafisa joined a leader like me, the very, very first cohort, so the founding members cohort. And when uh, Nafisa, when, when we first met Nafisa, she wasn't visible. She had a little emoji as a, her profile photograph. She never spoke on her platform. She never put herself out there. She was worried, right? She was worried. And she was worried about how she might come across. She was worried about what she might say. She wasn't really know what her voice was. So she joined our founding members group. And she, um, honestly, that that woman has just flown. She has taken off. She's speaking at events. She's speaking on podcasts. She's done some amazing life lessons. Like when I heard her life lessons, I was like, oh my goodness. Like she is smashing it, that woman. And I am so, so proud of her. Let's hear Nafisa's life lessons. Hi, I'm Nafisa Shafiq and I am the Student Communications and Engagement Manager at the University of Leeds. I have previously worked in PR and communications agencies and the local authority. I have picked five questions to share my life lessons, which I hope will help and inspire you. When has a failure turned out to be a positive experience? Despite getting great GCSE results, I didn't do so well at my A-levels. Um, the reason was because I hadn't put in the effort, I was completely unprepared. I remember how I felt when I received my results and because I was so disappointed with myself, I promised myself that I'd never put myself in a similar situation. I have since gone into things 100% prepared and then left the rest to luck. Have I ever been made redundant and can I tell you about the experience? I have, twice. The first time was quite early in my career. I was three months into a job that I had gotten through a graduate scheme. I remember being called into the boss's office at 4.45 on a Friday and he told me to hand in the keys and leave the building and not come back. He didn't give me a reason and I cried all the way home. I later found out that they couldn't afford to keep me on and had only hired me because they had received a grant for those three months. It was an awful situation. I was only able to get through it because of my family and my friends and the support that they gave me. And I would recommend that if anybody is going through anything similar, please try to seek help um, and support. Question three, when have I felt fear and done it anyway? So I've always been driven by having a certain brand or company's name on my CV and the only way that I could do that quite early on in my career was by moving to London and working for an agency there. I was in my early 20s and as a British born Pakistani Muslim I had led quite a sheltered life. And the prospect of moving over 200 miles away from my family was quite daunting. But after getting hired by one of the top global PR firms, I knew that I couldn't say no. I moved to the city and gained the experience that I needed and then I moved back to Yorkshire. When have I had to make a difficult choice about my career? So I talked about moving back to Yorkshire. The reason um, I moved back was because I met my husband whilst we were in London and we soon realised that it wasn't the place that we wanted to build our life. He was able to transfer his job across, but I couldn't. I was actually working for Edelman at the time, so that's the agency behind the Edelman Trust Barometer. And um, the job I had was one that many dreamed of. For me though, my dream had changed. So I left, uh, I got a job in an agency in Leeds and we moved back to Yorkshire and we've not looked back since. And finally, what are my top tips for presenting, whether that's at work or for a conference? I think it's really important to understand your audience, why they are listening to you and um, what they are hoping to get out of your presentation. Build your presentation and plan what you're going to say around this. 
um, I would recommend that you try to keep what you're saying simple. Use plain words where possible and stay focused on your core messages. It's also really important to connect with your audience and there are lots of ways that you can do this. Smile, make eye contact, tell stories. Storytelling techniques can be really powerful and can help you connect with your audience emotionally and help you to get your message across. Finally, I would say practice and listen back to yourself. It can be awkward, but it will really help you fine tune what you're saying. Thank you for listening to my life lessons. If you want to connect, I am on Twitter and LinkedIn. Just search for Nafisa Shafiq. I loved those life lessons. And it's really interesting that you gave us, you've sort of teed up Nafisa about her story. You wouldn't think that she was this sort of shy, retiring violet, would you, before you heard that? But there was some real kind of standout uh, pieces in there. I love what she talked about uh, when she had to make a difficult career. You know, she talked about having the career that many dreamed of. But she talks about the dream changes. You know, she left this job, this dream job she had, and she got a job in an agency in Leeds and she moved back to Yorkshire and she has not looked back since. So I think it's that proof that, you know, you may have one dream and one goal, but actually it's okay. It's okay to pivot, isn't it? It's okay to change, you know? And um, and I love also she talks about, you know, top t- tips for presenting uh, a work or a conference. And obviously we, we talk about our Be Heard uh, campaign about levelling up in the media and events, but she talks about storytelling you know how do you connect with that audience emotionally you know and practice 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 what did you take away from Navisa? I think you know Navisa's underlying theme throughout her life stories was that brave element you know she, she took risks she went out there she challenged herself she pushed herself and you know she did things and she said she was a you know a British Pakistani woman who had been sheltered you know she said that herself in her life lessons and for her to take that risk and go down to London and live out her first dream because you're right Simone you know we have you just because you have a dream it doesn't mean that your dream can't change and things happen and she fell in love and she got married and that changed her her dream again she came back in I just love the bravery element on there and and her tips are just amazing and I'm like I said I'm so proud of everything and I can't wait to see where she goes next. Oh, no, it's brilliant, brilliant. Thank you so much. And if you've got any life lessons that you want to share, please get in touch. Email email us or connect with us on socials, podcast at northernpowerwomen.com. Send us your email. We'll send you the questions. You record them and we'll do the rest. It's fantastic. We love, we love hearing these every week. Um, another feature of this season three is our high fives, where we ask you, what is your high five for the week? Um, and we've got a few here this week we've got Lisa Menard Atom she's from uh, Burn which is the Black United Representation Network and she has secured a board level apprenticeship with the MBH Corporation so congratulations Lisa. Alessia Michelli on Instagram has completed and finished her degree course in journalism well done Alessia please go and shake up the industry tell great stories and tell the great messages out there and we've got Crystal Hicks who was one of our recently featured life lessons to Talks about her Rosie, age five, ran one and a half miles last Saturday, all of her own back to raise money for people who don't have clean water. She learned about it at school and it really resonated with her. Bless her. I encouraged her to channel um, into that sad, into glad and to do something. And she's raised £470. So people are kind and Crystal is so proud. We're really proud. Well done. High five to you, Rosie. And Amanda, Amanda Adiola, who also also was another life lessons feature. Uh, she received a message this week from a client to notify her of the progress uh, after the case ended. She's a lawyer, award-winning lawyer, if you remember, Amanda. And, you know, she's received this notification and it's all turned out uh, really great for the family. And it's just filled her with so much pride and reminded her of why she does what she does and how she loves it so much. So massive high five. What's your high five for the week? Obviously, other than being on the podcast, Anita. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, apart from being on here, do you know what? I'm going to high five because this week, Simone, is Mental Health Awareness Week. And there's been so many amazing top tips and support and people are reaching out. So I want to 
spread my high five to those individuals and those people who are just getting through life and just pushing themselves and, and waking up every day and doing the thing they need to do and and loving themselves a bit more. I know that sounds so like that's I've always when I say things like that, it's so American. Love yourself, high five. And but it's true, you know, it's it's been a tough 18 months for a lot of people. Uh, almost everyone I know has gone through some sort of kind of mental health, you know, crisis and, and they've really struggled with it. So I want to give my high five to people who are just getting through it, churning through it, you know, trying to smile through the, through the, through the rubbish they're going through and, and still making things work for themselves. So well done and high five to everybody who's going through everything. Absolutely. You know what? It's OK not to be OK. You know, like you said, we talked last week on the podcast about languishing. And when you sort of you when you first talk about that word, you almost think, oh, I'm going to languish over here on a lounger and just take a bit of a time out. But actually, it was all it was it was that difference between mental health issue and being really good over here. It was that it was that sort of middle child, if you like, of mental health. It was that. And it's that just not quite having that challenge but not really all over it either so you know what we have to be kind to ourselves um and we've got to check in on the checkers we definitely say that quite a lot on here Um, my high five for this week is you know today's the day that the 17th that we come out of the next phase of you know lockdown and unlocking and we're doing it with different bits of trepidation aren't we you know we're all a bit wary about it but I've got members of my team coming up that I have never met at Vita, you know, so oh, wow. I've, got, I've got Philly and Gina uh, coming up. We've got a team gathering tomorrow. Um, Alex Cousins, who, you know, is creating some mischief in there. We're doing a we're doing a walking ghost tour of Liverpool, a Shiverpool tour. We're doing it in the day, mainly because some <laughs> of my team have found out a few scurdy cats in there. But you know what? I'm really excited um, to see these real life individuals who've been very much part of this lockdown for me for northern power women for northern power man so really excited but here's the question to hug or not to hug Advita what do you think oh I am not a hugger oh goodness me <laughs> like when that notification that notice came out saying everyone can start hugging from May the 17th I know some people like and it's great you know if you're a hugger and I can see how, how what a relief it is but I am <laughs> My friend should send, send me memes with a broomstick and tapping somebody on the shoulder. You'll be okay. You'll be okay. I have got better, Simone. So <laughs> every time I see you, I always want to give you a hug. And there's some people out there that I will definitely go and hug. But I just, I'm so, I am like, honestly, people take the mic out of me. My, some of my friends chase me around the garden to give me a big hug. And I don't know what it is, but I'm just, I'm not a hugger. I'm not. Oh, oh I feel really bad, so. but I'm really what, not. What are you going to do when someone comes up to you and hugs? Are you going to do that awkward kind of statue kind of thing? <laughs> it's that awkward side hug, you know, the kind of, oh, yeah, hi. But you know what? It's It's been a good 18 months, right? So who knows? I might have transitioned myself into a proper hugger now. So we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> what are you most looking forward to? Uh, you know, I I think there is a sense of we're definitely sort of little step by little step you know coming out um and, and what we do you know I know some people have been all over the beer gardens already and you know all you know what are you most looking forward to with this new kind of phase oh do you know what just getting together with friends and having drinks and food and chatting and not worrying about you know not having this kind of like one person at a distance and all that and even though I'm not a hugger as I clearly said I am a people person I love being surrounded by people I love bouncing off other people's energies and talking to my friends and I do miss you know I miss that connections that we've all had and as much as you know technology is amazing and imagine if all this horrible stuff had happened 15 years ago I mean goodness knows right what would happen but we've got zooms and skypes and teams and all those amazing technology that we could stay connected but I can't wait for that kind of like you just said that ghost walk and that would have been like running for the other side of the world if you said ghost walk to me Simone (laughs) but even I would be like I'm going for it I'm going for it in the daytime (laughs) with the other people (laughs) but I would do it because that's what you miss you miss that connection 
Absolutely. And and you know what, you, like you say, you know, you wouldn't have been setting up this global business if we hadn't had this technology and this lockdown and this awful virus hadn't come upon us. So, you know, you have, you've had your six week lull and now you've got this amazing global business and a whole, and you are unearthing and, uh, you know, sort of giving that platform and a stage to so many new role models out there and role models who probably didn't even embrace themselves as a role model. So my final high five for this week is to you, Miss Advita, for the amazing work that you do for, you know, not just coming on this podcast because, you know, you are the say yes and work it out later girl like me, but, you know, for everything that you've achieved and everything, I want to thank you and high five for everything that you and Priya, but you, I know what you do for other people. So a massive high five for, to you, Advita. Um, and thank you so much for, for being my co-pilot this week. Oh, thank you so much, Simone. And that means so much to me. And you know, and I told you this so many times, but you were the catalyst for me and my career. And you gave me hope when I felt that there was no hope. So a big high five back to you as well. And thank oh. you for asking me to be on here with you. Oh, no. And thank you so much. Another week of hearing amazing life lessons, high five and discussing everything in between. If you want to get involved, please get involved by emailing us at podcast at northernpowerwomen.com. And why not leave a review? We'd love that. We'd love to have your review of this award winning podcast. And don't forget uh, to have your voice heard like Advita at b-heard.io. The next episode will be coming your way on Monday, the 24th of May. But for now, this is the Northern Power Women podcast. I'm Simone Roche. She's Advita Patel. And the Northern Power Women podcast is a What Goes On Media production. Oh, yeah.